morning, Brother Jun. Morning, Brother. Uh, welcome po sa ating uh, virtual Bible study. At hopefully, you like our uh, first episode <laughs> with uh, Brother Jun again. So, our uh, study today is uh, we're going to study about the authority of the Bible. And our focal uh, text is in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. To 21. Okay, so our focus for uh, today is the Bible was written by persons under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And we have three objectives uh, here. And the learner should be able to explain the biblical meaning of divine inspiration based on 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 and 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 21, uh, Brother June. Mm-hmm. And secondly, uh, to expand on evidences on the Bible, divine inspiration. And number, number three, three, recognize the importance of divine inspiration in establishing the Bible's authority in matters of truth and life. Okay, so ang motivation natin, Brabong, is uh, did you ever have disagree with someone on matter of right and wrong, truth? and falsehood and other life's issues because you held on what the Bible says then most likely you have also encountered the comments the Bible is not God's word it was written by people like you and me therefore it cannot claim any authority in my life how would you establish the authority of the Bible in the last session we identify the central message of the Bible that salvation in Jesus Christ is the message or the central message of the Bible. So if you study from Genesis to Revelation, there is only one message hmm. all throughout. And they said that uh, the the thin red line that strikes from Genesis to Revelation, hmm. the red line there is the blood of Christ. So meaning, that the central message of the Bible is the salvation of mankind in Jesus Christ, right? So how would you then establish the authority of the Bible? Well, so understanding that message can change the way we view and live our life fully. But without establishing that the Bible is from God, we cannot appreciate any truth in the Bible. And it is important to establish the authority of the Bible in our life. So, if we will not uh, take uh, the Bible as, you know, we'll just take it for granted, just a, you know, just a book of wisdom or inspiration, uh, but no authority in our life, then it's uh, no other difference than, uh, you know, reading some uh, fictional or uh, non-fictional books. All those uh, best-selling books. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it is important to establish the authority of the Bible in our life. Brother Jun, so yeah. And we're gonna establish the authority of the Bible and claim any authority in our life as a rule. The rule of our life. Only the Bible. So, kinakailangan muna mga kapatid na maniniwala muna tayo sa Biblia para sa ganoon eh, ma-establish natin yung uh, faith natin hindi ba? Barbong yeah, yeah. kasi kung hindi ka naniniwala sa Biblia eh, ibig sabihin wala na tayong pag-uusapan di ba? Yeah. Yeah. so sa mga marami pong uh, nagtatanong mga, mga kapag ipinapangaral natin tungkol sa Biblia ay eh, lagi yun nilang sinasabi gawa ng tao yan sinulat ng tao yan Di ba, Brabong? Yeah, kasi, so, alimbawa, mm-hmm. pag, pag magbabasa ka ng ano, isang book, mm-hmm. alimbawa, yung Harry Potter noon, di ba? Mm-hmm. Anong una mong tinitignan? Yung writer. Yung author, right? Yung writer, di ba? Mm-hmm. Pero, kaya, kung talagang titingin ka ng isang book na babasahin talaga, ay titignan mo yung writer kasi yung writer, na-establish na niya mm-hmm. yung kanyang autoridad na ganon siya kagaling. Amen. Di ba? So, ibig sabihin, pinaniniwalaan mo, believe ka doon sa Kanya. Amen. Yeah. yeah. So, if we establish in our life that the Holy Spirit 
or God Himself is the author mm -hmm. of the Bible, then mm -hmm. it will rule out that the Bible will be the authority of our life. Because Amen. we believe that the Holy Spirit, the writer mm -hmm. of the Bible, is the Holy Spirit Himself, uh, Brother Jun. Yeah. Okay. Amen. So, so we have to explore more. Okay. We explore more the biblical meaning of divine inter intervention as we read on 2 Timothy 3.16 ang sabi sa Tagalog na ang, ang lahat ng kasulatay kinasihan ng Diyos sa pagpapabuluan sa maging sa maling aral at sa, mat sa matuwid o likong gawain at ito'y ginagamit din sa pag-akay para sa matuwid na pamumuhay. Amen! Mm. Amen, yeah. So, the biblical meaning of divine inspiration, Brother John, mm -hmm. medyo na-off guard ako doon, ha? Kasi, uh, memorize mo pala. Uh, eh, yung yeah. kaisa-isang memorize ko, Brother yeah. John, Brother Bong. Yeah. <laughs> Sana, makakano rin ako. Kasi, ang memorize ko pala ngayon, yung uh, team natin, yan, yung Psalms chapter 1, verse 2 to 3. Di ba? Pero, napakaganda itong uh, focal verse natin, yung dalawa, yung 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. So, this are the two classic passages that describe the divine inspiration of the Bible, mga kapatid. Yung 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, mm -hmm. yung nirecite kanina ni Brother John, mm -hmm. at saka yung 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 to 21. At babasahin ko sa English, mm -hmm. doon sa 2, Peter, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Mm -hmm. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching the truth, mm -hmm. rebuking error, mm -hmm correcting results, and giving instruction for right living. So, in other words, the word inspired in this verse does not mean that scripture is inspiring. Diba? So, when we say inspiration, it doesn't mean that the Bible is just inspiring you. Right? Nor does it mean that it was written by inspired or enthusiastic men or authors, or writers, as we discussed uh, uh, before, right? So the literal meaning of the word translated as inspired is God breathed out by God. So, ibig sabihin, Brother Bong, hindi ba yung ako ang nagsusulat, tapos may nagdidikta sa akin. So, mara <laughs> may, mga, may mga naririnig tayo, paano yung mga sinasabi ng ilan na ito ang ipinaisip ng, sa akin ng, ng Diyos. Paano po natin maipapaliwanag yung mga ganong kaisipan ng mga kakilala natin? Na ito ang ipinaisip sa akin ng Diyos. Ayan. Eh kung, kung yun ang pinaisip ng Lord, eh dapat isulat mo. Para Amen. hindi mo makalimutan. Amen. Kasi baka bukas o makalawa, iba na naman ang pinaisip ng Lord sa iyo. Eh contradiction na. Ang maganda doon, dapat isulat mo. Hmm. Kung ano ang pinaisip ng Lord sa iyo, isulat mo and from Monday to Friday, Saturday and Sunday, kung pare-parehas yun, o anong ibig sabihin, walang contradiction. Di ba? Pero pag nagko-contradict mm -hmm. ang mga pinapaisip ng Lord sa iyo, delikado yan, <laughs> brother John. Di ba? So, Amen. <laughs> pero ang focus nito, mm -hmm. ang focus nito, is scriptures is God breathed. Iba yung inspiration, di ba? Pag nagbabasa ka ng ng ibang libro mm -hmm. o nanonood ka, na-inspire ka, di ba? Pero yung inspiration sa book, sa Bible, yung divine inspiration, what it means is, is scripture is God breathed. Mm -hmm. All of the scripture is breathed out by God. And God Himself inspired holy men of old to record His revelation without violating their freedom as persons when He moved them to do so. So, sa makatawid, brother Bong, talagang ang Biblia ay salita ng Diyos. Mga marami bang, mga, may mga record ba tayo kung ilan bisis nagsalita ang Panginoong Diyos sa Bible? Ayan, makikita natin dito ngayon, mamaya. Okay, amen. Diba? Kaya makita mo rito, yung hmm. God breath talaga ay yung may individual professions ang mga writers ng Bible. Mm. Pero yung idea behind, yung sinasabi mm. ng Lord sa kanya, mm. in his profession, katulad ni Luke, the Gospel of Luke. Mm -hmm. You can see the Gospel of Luke. Makikita mo doon, puro medical uh, terms, halos ang nagamit doon. Kaya sinasabi nila, Dr. Luke. Dr. Luke, di ba? Yeah. Kaya, God allows 
the freedom or he didn't violate the freedom as persons when he moved them to do so as he record his revelation with his authors. Ganon katindi ya, Brother John. Yun ang, ang 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 16. So yung second classic Second passages yeah. describe Timothy. the divine inspiration of the Bible is uh, we can found it in uh, 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 21 brother John okay. ito ang sinasabi sa 2 Peter 1:21 amen for no prophetic message ever came just from the will of man but men were under the control of the holy spirit as they spoke the message that came from god amen mm. so napakaliwanag Sabi niya, this verse help us to understand the role of God and of the human writers in recording of Scripture. And the three important facts about inspired uh, Scripture is the message prophets delivered came from beyond themselves and were not spoken by their own will. And secondly, The human writers were under the control of the Holy Spirit. So, Amen. Paano natin maintindihan ito? Under the control of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So ibig sabihin, those writers were mm-hmm. under the control of the Holy Spirit when they put into writing what was in their thoughts. So in number two, say the message they wrote came from God. So ibig sabihin. The message that they put into writing came from God. In other words, the essence mm-hmm. of the message they wrote came from God. So talagang pinili ng Panginoong Diyos yung mga taong ito para magsulat. Pinili niya. Hindi ibig sabihin na ang Panginoong Diyos ay dapat ay, basta na lang namulot kung saan-saan na lang. Mm. So Okay, ipagpatuloy natin yung uh, <laughs> yung maganda yan, 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 yung sabi niya. Yan. The message they wrote came from God. Sabi niya, uh, through verbal, unbreakable, it is irrevocable, it, it has the final authority. Amen. Okay. So so, so this natin. one brother John, mm-hmm. this one note that there are some pertinent characteristics included in the claim of the inspiration of the Bible. At yung binanggit mo, yun yung mga pertinent characteristic na ibig sabihin that those are included in the claim for the inspiration from within the Bible itself. And it is verbal. As we can see in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17, the one that you just uh, Red brother John, right? We see that not only are the ideas or truths of the biblical message inspired, but also the words chosen to convey the message are inspired. So in other words, it is bare well. Those are the pertinent characteristics in the claim, the inspiration from within the Bible itself. So the Bible is speaks that claims for inspiration from within. Ibig sabihin, it is verbal. Yun ang talagang, sinasabi ng... Talagang salita. Yan. Salita ng Diyos talaga mismo. Oo. Diba? Boses mismo. Boses mismo, hindi yung murmur or kung ano-ano Oo, na... Hindi lang Morse code. Hindi Morse code. Yeah. Diba ginagamit nyo sa siman, di ba? Mm-hmm. Yung... Uh, nung araw. Nung araw. Yeah. Yung parang... Dit da dit. Dit da dit. Parang telegrama. <laughs> telegrama. Yes. Tapos i-translate mo. Hindi ganon. Mm-hmm. So... The pertinent characteristics, Brother John, mm-hmm. in the claim for the inspiration from within the Bible itself is is verbal. Mm-hmm. As we can read it in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. Mm-hmm. And second characteristic is it is unbreakable. And we can read that one in John chapter 10, verse 35. When Jesus told to the Jews, His scripture cannot be broken. In other words, His scripture is in Fallible. Hindi na babali. Hindi na babali. It's unbreakable. Di ko alam kung napanood mo yung uh, movie na Unbreakable yeah. ni Bruce Willis. Di ba? Ilang beses mm-hmm. na siyang nahulog. Ay yung parang near-death experience, di ba? Yung parang mm-hmm. yung akala mo hindi na siya mabubuhay. Mm-hmm. Pero nabuhay pa rin siya. Uh, die hard. Die hard, mm-hmm. di ba? So, okay. unbreakable. 
So the Bible is unbreakable and this is one of the pertinent characteristics included in the claim of the inspiration from within the Bible itself. And number three is irrevocable. Amen, yeah. So when we say irrevocable, it is fixed, unalterable, mm-hmm. unbreakable, mm-hmm. and this is clear from Matthew chapter 5 verse 18. Parang kung nagpile ako ng aking kuan nagpasa ako ng halimbawang magkukwit na ako irrevocable itong resignation ko parang ganun amen yan yan so so yun ang isang karakteristik ng uh, ano mm-hmm. ng inspiration ng bible uh, brother John. Mm-hmm. it's irrevocable in Matthew chapter 5 verse 18 sabi niya remember that as long as heaven and earth last not the least point nor the smallest detail of the law will be done away with not until the end of all things So similarly, Jesus included the entire Old Testament in saying, Everything written about me in the law of Moses, the writings of the prophets and the subs, had to come true. Mm-hmm. Amen. And we can read that one in Luke chapter 24 verse 44. So dito makikita mo, Brother John, yung pertinent characteristics included in the claim for inspiration from within the Bible itself. Because sinasabi natin kanina, not, not only is scripture is god breath the human authors were also spirit-controlled. So, tama yung sabi mo kanina, that the message he wrote came from God, and these writers were under the control of the Holy Spirit. So, anong masasabi mo dyan, na, Brother John? Amen. So, yung pang-apat na sinasabi mo kanina na, It has final authority. Ayan. So, so the scripture, as we just discussed, these are the characteristics, the fourth characteristic of the Bible, which claim for inspiration from within itself. Ito yung sabi niya, it has final authority. And Jesus quoted the Old Testament scriptures with finality when resisting the tempter. Remember the tempter? Mm-hmm. In Matthew chapter 4. Verse 4, yung tempter, of course, ay si Satan, si Satanas, di ba? And kung makikita mo doon, yung temptation of Jesus Christ in the wilderness, right? Mm-hmm. So what did Jesus do? He used the Old Testament decisively to settle the question about the resurrection in His answer to the Pharisees. Di ba? Uh, ngayon sa Pilipinas at saka sa Canada at buong mundo, Diba, sikat na sikat itong decisive leader. So anong anong pag pag na pag na rinig mo yung sinasabing si Duterte raw ay decisive decisive uh, leader. Decisive ay yung parang alimbawa, pag meron na siyang uh, problema mm-hmm. o meron siyang kalaban, mm-hmm. instantly nagde-decide na siya. Hindi na niya hindi na siya ano, hindi na niya pinapabukas pa yung yung decision niya kundi instantly pag nakita na niya yung problema mm-hmm. nakita na niya yung uh, sitwasyon instantly instantaneous, instantaneously he decide at the moment i see kaya jesus christ what he did mm-hmm. in his temptation in the wilderness mm-hmm. is he used the old testament decisively at the moment instantly to settle the question about the resurrection in his answer also to the Pharisees in Matthew chapter 21. Kasi yung, yung tempter, nagbabasa din ng Biblia. Amen. <laughs> Sabi niya, nasusulat. Yan. Ibig sabihin, kahit mga kaaway, ibig sabihin, nagbabasa din ng Bible. So, may mga na-encounter tayo mga kapatid na may nagtatanong na nagtatanong na hindi alam ang sagot na gustong marinig yung kung ano talaga yung ibig sabihin ng tinatanong at mayroon naman yung nagtatanong na alam na yung mga sagot ayan uh, tama yan <laughs> tama yan brother John kasi huh? tignan mo sa sa in the book of James di ba even Satan himself di ba is very subtle And he knows the scripture. And he also have faith. And he even trembled when he when he hear. 
the word of God. So, ibig sabihin, si Satanas, uh, Brother John, ay magaling din sa Biblia. Ang matindi dyan, tinitwist niya yung Bible. Para ganon, ay yung katotohanan ay ma-divert sa kanya. Kaya tignan mo ngayon, daming relihiyon ngayon. Sikat na sikat. Di ba? Lumalago. Di ba? Tignan mo sila. Oh, ang gagaling. So, mahirap. It's a challenge na barabong na mag-share ka sa mayroon ng nalalaman dahil siyempre kung halimbawa kung yung sinasabi natin parang sarado na kasi mayroon na silang pinanani, pinaniniwala ang una na narinig mm. ang masaklap nun baka yung mga kaisipang mga ganyan eh sarado na kumbaga yeah. ang problema sarado na nga nawawala pa ang susi <laughs> <laughs> Ay, wala ka nang wala ka nang magagawa doon, brother John, okay. di ba? So, wala ka na doon. So babalik tayo uli doon sa una nating pinag-aralan na talagang inspired by the Holy Spirit. Kahit gaano po tayo kagaling mga kapatid na mag-share sa inyo ng salita ng Diyos kung hindi ho kaluuban ng Panginoong Diyos na kayo maniniwala, wala pa rin tayong magagawa. Ganun ho ba 'yon, brother Bong? Ah, hindi Ma- mapapag-aralan natin when we go to our topics about salvation okay. that we are saved by grace through faith in baptism for good works okay. yeah. mapapag-aralan natin yan di ba? So yung team natin for this year mm-hmm. ay roots and wings mm-hmm. because we're going to go deeper with the roots and if you don't know mm-hmm. the doctrines really of the Bible mm-hmm. di ba? and then of course ma ano ka ma liligaw ka kasi mm-hmm. tignan mo manood ka lang ng YouTube Uh, manood ka ng TV oh, ang gagaling mag, uh, ano, mag-deliver ng sermon actually hindi na sermon yun eh public speaking na yun mm-hmm. debate na yun di ba? Mm-hmm. alam kagaling pero pag tignan mo yung content ng sinasabi nila mm-hmm. ay lumilihis sa katotohanan ng sinasabi, yun, ng sinasabi, dyan, sinasabi lang eh, yung gusto mo lang marinig Amen. yun nga yung sabi ni brother Mel sa sermon niya di ba? na yung parang ganda lang pakinggan Di ba parang yung, uh, liwa mo, mag-order ka ng, ano, ng burger. Mm-hmm. Sarap lang pag nakikita mo. Mm-hmm. Parang diba? salesman, ha? Salesman. Mm-hmm. Ayan. Uh, number five, eh. It is full of bull or plenary. Ayan. So that is the last uh, characteristic or pertinent characteristic that the Bible is inspired. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brother John. It is full or plenary. This means... That every part of the Bible is inspired and is therefore authoritative truth. In other words, the Bible as a whole, not just various parts, is the Word of God. So, it's not just part, but it's totally, the totality, right, is the Word of God. And Jesus referred to all sections of the Hebrew Scriptures as predictive of Himself. In Luke chapter 24, verse 27 and 44. And similarly, Uh, Peter, the Apostle Peter, right, considered the Old Testament as a whole to be prophetic writing and given by the Spirit of Christ. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 10 to 11. So, lahat ng nakasulat dun sa Old Testament, it points out, it points to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Mm-hmm. So, those are the pertinent uh, characteristics that the Bible which is included in the claim for inspiration from within the Bible itself. Okay. So, dumako naman tayo sa mga ebidensya. Biblical evidences for the divine inspiration. Uh, how can we be sure that the Bible is inspired by God? Are there are any evidences? Ayan. Ayan. Uh, isa-isahin natin yan, Brother John. Mm-hmm. Diba? So, when we say Biblical evidences for divine inspiration eh di ba salita lang tayo ng salita rito eh wala naman tayong may preba. presentang preba mm-hmm. di ba kaya titignan natin ngayon dito the evidences what are the evidences that the bible is divinely inspired right so Christians can be sure about the inspiration of the bible for there are enough evidences in the bible for this claim Number one, the testimony 
of the Holy Spirit. That's one of the evidence that the Bible is inspired. The Holy Spirit not only bears witness to the believer that he is a child of God, Romans 8.16. He also bears witness that the Bible is the Word of God. And this may be summarized as follows. The book witnessed to by the Spirit of God is the Word of God. Mga kapatid, and the Bible is the book witnessed to by the Spirit of God. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20. One of our focal verse. And therefore, the Bible is the Word of God. So that's the first evidence, Brother John. The testimony of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit Himself is the author of the Bible. So that's the first evidence, Brother John. And there are uh, the second evidence mm -hmm. that the Bible is divinely inspired is the testimony of Jesus Christ. Right? So the character and teachings of Christ are a matter of history. Since Jesus Christ's truthfulness is unquestionable, then what he taught about the Bible is true. And Jesus himself considered the Bible as the Word of God. And therefore, based on the testimony of Jesus Christ, the Bible is inspired by God. And this argument, Brother John, is formalized as follows. Okay. Whatever Jesus taught is true, the doctrine of inspiration of the Bible, Old Testament, is something Jesus taught. And therefore, the doctrine of inspiration if of the Bible is really true. Because testimony of Jesus, right, mm -hmm. caught the scriptures when he came here on earth. So, ang tanong ko, Brabo, kailan ba nagsimulang magministeryo at magturo ang Panginoong Jesus? Ayan. Well, uh, if you look uh, back to the history, right? Mm-hmm. So the dividing line mm -hmm. that cuts through history mm -hmm. is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ because dates started from Him. Kaya nga, in the year of the Lord, Anyo Domini. Yes, mm -hmm. in the year. Kaya nga, tignan mo yung ibang religion, di ba? Yung mga founder nila, they align their calendar. Eh, tayo yung mga Kristiyano because it's accepted and scientifically proven, mm -hmm. di ba? Yung 365 and one fourth days, right? In a year, di ba? And it is started the history beginning from the coming of the birth of Jesus Christ. That's why that's the dividing line, di ba? Pero tignan mong ibang religion, they also want to imitate that one. That's why they create their own calendars in order to conform to the coming of their founders. Kaya tignan mo dito sa Canada. O, oh, may, may, uh, may mga ibang New Year, iba-ibang religion, iba-ibang country, di ba? Yeah. Because they want to align it to the founder of their beliefs. Ganon yun, Brother John. Alright, number three, Yan. yung the testimony of archaeology. Yan, this is the third evidence that the Bible is inspired. The testimony of archaeology. Di ba, napag-aralan natin ito last time. That uh, he is... Historical confirmation of the accuracy of the Bible has come from the field of archaeology. Kaya nga, yung archaeology is a science of the systematic recovery of material evidence remaining from man's life and culture in past ages. And in connection with the biblical archaeology, you know, one of the biblical archaeologists known is D.J. Wiseman, di ba? And he wrote that the geography of Bible lands and visible remains of antiquity were gradually recorded until today. More than 25,000 sites mm -hmm. with its region and dating to the Old Testament times. In the old broadest sense, have been located among the finds are about a half a million clay documents in the cuneiform script dating from about B.C. 3300 to A.D. 50 widely used throughout the area. So, Amen. So, kung uh, kagaya ng mga treasure hunters, may mga mapa, ngayon naman, yung mga biblical archaeologists, yung Bible ang pinagbabasihan para mahanap ang mga katunayan kung yun ba o hindi. Gaya ng mga Noah's Ark, 
Garden of Eden and so on and so forth. Yeah. Ma- maganda yan, brother John, kasi last time na pag-usapan natin, di ba? Mm-hmm. Na in the field of archaeology and discovery, mm-hmm. di ba? Eh, they discover it, di ba? Para bang they, they gonna uh, dig or find something in order to prove mm-hmm. the Bible. We should go to the Bible because First. lahat yung nakasulat na yon, yes. and then we will go and find those what was written in the Bible, not the other way around. Mm-hmm. Di ba? Uh, it says uh, 25,000 sites within the region, basically in Israel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, not only in Israel, but in the in the in the land geography of the Bible. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine? Uh, 3,302 AD 50. So that is the you know it it that is the time frame from the Bible was written until to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and even to the early days of the apostles. Yeah, so that's the third uh, evidence that the Bible is inspired. And mm-hmm. even archaeology, for that matter, has confirmed the credibility of the Bible. Kaya yung sabi na- natin kanina, di ba? Mm-hmm. Yung archaeology, they want to confirm the credibility of the Bible, right? Mm-hmm. But actually, it's already confirmed, right? Mm-hmm. But it should be the other way around. The Bible should confirm, right, what was uh, they discovered. in archaeology. Di ba? Maganda yung ano na yun, na dapat yung Bible ang reference mo. Mm-hmm. It's not uh, your dig or findings, historical artifacts mm-hmm. that you gonna find and then you gonna confirm the Bible is right. It should be the other way around. Sabi nga natin, nakasulat na lahat sa Bible. Yan. Alright. Ano yung num- number four? Uh, the unity of the Bible. Yan. So the fourth evidence that the Bible is inspired by John is the unity of the Bible. Remember last time we discussed that uh, even though the Bible was written by about 40 authors mm-hmm. with different backgrounds and at different times over a span period of 1500 years there is amazing unity in its message and contents. So ibig sabihin hindi nagkakasalungat Amen. Yung mga sinulat. Amen. So it doesn't contradict. Mm-hmm. In other words, a book with amazing unity amid great diversity of authors and background mm-hmm. is best explained as a work of God. And the Bible is such a book and therefore the Bible is best explained as a work of a deity or a work of God. Brother John. Amen. Okay, at ang panglima, is the testimony of fulfilled prophecies. Yan. So, yung number five, the evidence that the Bible is inspired is the testimony of fulfilled prophecy. Di ba, may nabalitaan tayo rito sa Canada rito noon na merong gumawa ng research about probability and statistics. Di ba? Mm-hmm. Na alimbawa, iahagis niya yung uh, loony. Mm-hmm. Di ba? Sa kanyang backyard. Mm-hmm. Kukulayan niya yan ng green. Okay. Diba? Iahagis niya sa yung backyard mm-hmm. and then he gonna put other loonies two feet up and then you gonna find that green loony that he put it in the billions of loony in your backyard. Galing. So, if you can find that one green uh, loony, Brother John, that is the accuracy of a prophecy. And the testimony of fulfilled prophecies, as described, right, as number five evidence of the inspiration of the Bible is hundreds of prophecies made by the prophets of God had been fulfilled to the letter. And many of these were about the destiny of world empires, even nations, and even cities in particular. is already written in the Bible. It was prophesied there. For instance, Brother John, mm-hmm. a prophecy... was pronounced against the great Old Testament city of Tyre. Remember that? Because okay. of its wickedness. Pag tignan mo sa mapa ngayon, yung Tyre, ay, makita mo yung small horn doon sa Mediterranean, mm-hmm. doon sa Lebanon area. Okay. Diba? Ayun. That is the city of Tyre. And they would abolish that city. Ezekiel chapter 26 verse 1 to 21. And today, the city no longer exists. 
Yet, its neighboring city, Sidon, still exists because in all probability, there was no pro prophecy regarding its destruction. Di ba? So, they prophesy the destruction of Tyre. Di ba? At yung katabi niya, Sidon. Di ba? Okay. Na, na destroyed yung uh, Tyre, pero yung Sidon, nandun pa rin. Mm -hmm. Ibig sabihin, as, as written by the book of Ezekiel, makikita mo yung Sidon, nandun pa rin. So, ibig sabihin that the prophecy is very accurate in the Old Testament. Right? And, uh, Sidon is still exist because in all probability, there was no prophecy regarding its destruction. And there are also many prophecies about the birth of Christ, which were all literally fulfilled when Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Brother John, and to summarize this one, it may be said that repeated and accurate predictions of future events must be supernaturally given. And Bible prophecies have repeatedly and accurately predicted future events. And therefore, Bible prophecies must have been supernaturally given. So those are the characteristics of a prophecy. Mm -hmm. And as we study further this one, this is the fifth evidence that the Bible is inspired. The testimony of fulfilled prophecies. So ngayon, bravo, ang tanong ko, wala nang propeta ngayon sa panahon natin ngayon? Sa... Well, uh, <laughs> ibang usapan na naman yan, brother John, di ba? Mapapaano tayo yan. Pero makikita natin sa New Testament, meron ding mga propeta doon. Yeah, kasi marami tayong naririnig, nakikita nga sa YouTube, uh, prophet na ganito. Oh, prophet. prophet. Oh, prophet Apostle. Na yes. Amen. O, di ba? Yeah. Hindi, son of God pa nga eh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Di ba? Mm -hmm. Mas matindi pa yun sa propeta kasi sinabi niya, son of God. O, oh. edi siya na yung fulfillment ng propesya. Delikado yan, brother John. Uh, so, Kaya nga tayo nananaliksik mga kapatid dahil paano noon natin maliwanagan yung mga bagay-bagay na mga nagkalat ngayon sa sa mga paligid natin. Lalo-lalo na ngayon eh, sa internet. Diba? Sandali mo lang mag-google yan. Oo. Uh -huh. Amen. So, eh kung makuha ka lang sa, ano, sa tamis ng uh, salita, Brother Joe, na hindi uh -huh. ka na mag-aaral talaga, uh -huh. ay uh, pupulutin ka talaga sa kangkungan, sabi ni Erap. Uh -huh. ba diba? Okay, so, uh, yung panganim, uh, Ayan. indestructibility of the Bible. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yan. So, the number six evidence that the Bible is inspired by the John is mm -hmm. indestructibility of the Bible. Yung parang na napag-aralan natin kanina, na parang uh, unbreakable. Pero ito naman, indestructible. Ibig sabihin, the Bible has its withstood the attacks of its enemies. Prior to Judas, for example, Judas' captivity to Babylon. Yes. Judas, King Sedekiah, destroyed the scroll. Mm -hmm. Remember King Sedekiah? Mm -hmm. uh, King Sedekiah destroyed mm -hmm. a portion of the scroll containing God's judgment so, against Judah and Israel. Mo, kahit sunugin mo pa yan. Ayan. Yeah. Kasi lilitaw ay at lilitaw pa rin. Amen. Kasi mm -hmm. ayaw ni ano eh. Mm -hmm. Ayaw ni King Sedekiah na mm -hmm. ma marinig niya mm -hmm. yung judgment sa kanya. Yung judgment, kaya ang ginawa niya, mm. in our terms, pinunit niya. Di ba? Ano ginawa ng Lord, mm. Brother John? Mm -hmm. God judged King Sedekiah, who eventually died in the hands of his Babylonian captors. Di ba? Hindi siya nakaligtas. In contrast, God's word to Jeremiah also remained mm. when the Lord commanded Jeremiah to write his words again on another scroll. And Jeremiah dictated God's words to Baruch. Kilala mm. mo si Baruch, uh, Brother John? Tarasan, kilala ko. <laughs> si Tarasan at Baruch, siguro. Si Tarasan, kilala ko. Yeah. Pero si Baruch, hindi. Ayan. Alam mo si Baruch, mm. siya yung secretary ni Prophet Jeremiah. Mm. Di ba? Uh, I see. So, ibig sabihin, nung araw pa, may secretary na. May, may secretary na. May executive secretary na. Pero, mm. lalaki ito, Brother John. Okay. Hindi ito, <laughs> babae oh, okay, okay. kasi baka delikado eh. Mm -hmm. eh paano mag dalawa lang kayo sa office oh? mm -hmm. patay right. diba? And then... kaya si Baruch tignan mo ha si Baruch is the secretary of the prophet Jeremiah and he said and today we have a recorded of these words in our Bibles mm -hmm. right and also the edict of Emperor Diocletian you know I, know, I don't know if you if you watch uh, the movie Gladiator 
Brother John. Mm-hmm. Di ba makikita mo doon? Yung emperador nila. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So in AD 303, ito, panahon ito ni Emperor Diocletian. Mm-hmm. Diocletian commanded that Bibles be burned. Mm-hmm. And yet to date, no person, no country has ever successfully destroyed the Bible. Tignan mo ngayon yung panahon natin. Mm-hmm. Yung mga communist country, Brother John. Di ba? They want to rewrite the history of the Bible so that it will conform to their ideals as a country. Alam mo na siguro ang tinutukoy ko. Mm-hmm. Di ba? Yeah. Di ba? And yeah. some, through the ages, through the centuries, through millennia, Brother John, mm-hmm. they want to destroy the Bible. But, today, in fact, the Bible remains to be the world's best-selling books so, and widely distributed mm-hmm. as recorded in 2002 figures by the world a genius yeah. book. So, just come uh, fast forward from 303 AD, pupunta naman tayo sa 16th century sa kapanahonan ni King James. Kaya yung lumabas yung King James version, di ba? So, during that time, uh, may mga taong kailangang mag-aral muna para sa ganoon, ma-interpret mo ng tama ang Bible. Ayan. So, Paano mo natin ngayon maipapaliwanag na ang Bible ngayon ay kahit sino pwedeng bumasa at kahit sino maunawaan? So, average, average IQ. Mm-hmm. So, so, indestructible of the Bible, ibig sabihin kahit ano pang pilit mo gawin, gawin na parang itatago mo okay. na sunugin mo kahit sunugin mo. So, Kagaya nga yung sinasabi ko na kapanahonan ni King James. Mm. Kaya very, very popular your King James mm. version na siya pa rin ating ginagamit ngayon. Na yun nga, na yung sa Malacay, sabi niya nito, yung pagpatuloy natin. Bravo. Oh, sige. Yeah. Yan, anyway, sa so, mga mapag-aralan natin yan kasi nasa yes. pangalawa pa lang tayo. Yes. Kasi maganda ito eh. Habang mm. uh, paabot na abot tayo doon sa sa team natin mm. ay talagang lumalalim mm. ito hanggang makarating tayo doon sa alam mo brother John ito mm. ha mm. parang ano lang natin mm. alam mo ba ang pinakaunang translation mm. ng okay. Bible sa ating sa ating uh, langwahe sa Pilipinas kasi asawa mo Pangasinan eh mm. before pa ng 1896 before mm. ba yan panahon mm. ng mga katipunero mm. na translate na yan in Pangasinan in the language of Pangasinense. Ganun ba yun? Ayun. Oh. Kaya mapag-aralan natin yan na oh, okay. later on. Yan. Okay. Pero, dito, Brother John, magkikita natin that the Bible is indestructible talaga. Mm-hmm. Ibig sabihin, it's one of the evidence that the Bible is inspired. Kahit anong gawin mo, kahit yung mga nasa gobyerno ngayon, di ba? Mm-hmm. Gusto nga nila, kasi ngayon, hindi na pwedeng sunugin eh. Mm-hmm. Ang modern term na ngayon ay gusto nga nilang parang ano eh, uh, parang yung meaning, yung essence niya, palitan. Palitan, mm-hmm. di ba? Di ba? Or they twist, di ba? Pero the Bible is inspired, ibig sabihin, the meaning is, is indestructible. Right. Because Jesus' words, brother yun sabi niya, in Mark chapter 13 verse 31, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. And we may then logically state that the book with proven indestructibility is best explained as God's word. And the Bible is such a book. Therefore, the Bible is best explained as God's word. Okay. Patapos na tayo mga kapalit. So, conclusion. Ayan. So, mga kapatid, the Bible itself testifies as to its source or God Himself. Our focal passages, as Brother John has just read, show that all Scripture is God-breathed and written by men who were controlled by the Holy Spirit. In other words, the author of the Bible is God Himself. Therefore, the Bible is divinely inspired. And Jesus Christ testifies its authority. 
and the Holy Spirit gives witness to it as the Word of God. And even archaeology confirms its accuracy within itself. And the Bible has demonstrated, mga kapatid, amazing unity. Hundreds of prophecies in the Bible have been fulfilled in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. And over thousands of years, Brother June, it has been proven itself as indestructible. And therefore, we further affirm that the Bible is God's Word. And the Bible is truth without any mixture of any error. Mga kapatid. Amen. Amen. All right. So, okay. So, let's close uh, this uh, virtual Bible study. And remember, our topic, our theme for this month is Growing Roots in God's Word. Brother John. So, hopefully at the end of this uh, series this month, mm-hmm. and we are able now to understand the story and the relevance of the Bible in our life. Sa anumang